Hey friends, I'm Pastor Joe. Today is Tuesday and I have your word for the day. Yesterday, Pastor Chad kicked off our week long focus and emphasis on Nehemiah and our emphasis is, is on rebuilding and renewing lives after we return to whatever this new normal is going to look like. Now, I'm standing here at our church facility. Can I just tell you, we cannot wait to gather with you for worship. This building, the rocks are crying out to be filled with praises of God's people and we cannot wait to return. Today our focus is going to be on Nehemiah chapter 1 verses 1 through 4. Let's read together. In late autumn, in the month of Kislev, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes' reign, I was at the fortress of Susa. Hanani, one of my brothers, came to visit me with some other men who had just arrived from Judah. I asked them about the Jews who had returned there from captivity and about how things were going in Jerusalem. They said to me, things are not going well for those who return to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem has been, down, has been torn down and the gates have been destroyed by fire. When I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days I mourned, fasted, and prayed to the God of heaven. The people of Israel had been taken as prisoners to Babylon. And, and as they began to return from captivity, we first have to understand that those walls had been destroyed for 150 years. And as the walls were down and as the city was empty, squatters moved into Jerusalem and they took over the land. So the significance... God had given that land to the Israelites and now squatters were occupying what God had given to the Jewish people. The captivity ended. The Israelites began returning to the city in waves. Attempts after attempts were made to rebuild the walls, but each attempt ended in failure. Now, Nehemiah lived about 800 miles away. He was serving the king of Persia, Artaxerxes. He was the king's taste tester. And essentially, he was an important and trusted position. A lot of scholars say that he was the second most important person in the land. Well, Nehemiah's brother came to visit Nehemiah. And Nehemiah asked how the Jewish people were doing, and his brother said the people of Jerusalem were terrible. The, the lack of the walls for the city meant that the people of Jerusalem were defenseless against their enemies. They were easily being attacked from people on the outside, and squatters had taken up residence within the city, and the people of Israel were being attacked from the inside. Their identity as God's chosen people among neighboring nations began to fade because of the disgrace the city was experiencing. So why did Nehemiah weep? The walls had been down already for 150 years. And unless Nehemiah was 180 years old, and he wasn't, this news did not surprise Nehemiah. Nehemiah grew up knowing from a child to serving King Artaxerxes, he knew the walls were down. The news didn't catch him off guard. He didn't cover up his mouth and surprise and gasp. Did Nehemiah weep because things weren't going well for his Jewish brothers and sisters? I don't think so. As the cupbearer to the king, he was second in command. He played a very close and personal relationship with the king. He, he sipped the king's wine before the king ate it. He tasted the king's food to ensure that he wasn't poisoned. He worked very closely with the king and served as one of his closest servants. Now, scholars suggest that a cupbearer would be well-educated. They'd be handsome, a good listener, and a good companion. He would have great influence over those who could see the king and above all, would be one who enjoyed the unreserved confidence of the king. Now, I've been studying and meditating on Nehemiah since 1996. 
I've become convinced that Nehemiah did not weep because the walls were down. He did not even weep because his fellow brothers and sisters were having a hard time. Nehemiah wept in brokenness because he realized his heart was filled with apathy and indifference. Now, the books of Nehemiah and the book of Ezra are connected and have some overlap. In Ezra chapter 4, Ezra records what happens previously when some of the Jewish exiles had returned to Jerusalem and began to rebuild the walls. A letter was written to King Artaxerxes warning him that an attempt was being made to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. You can read this account in Ezra chapter 4 verses 7 through 23. And Artaxerxes, with a show of force, ordered that the city walls not be rebuilt. This was the same king that Nehemiah was second in command to. I believe that Nehemiah was present when the king received the letter. I believe he had, he had opportunity after opportunity to say something to the king without fear. Yet, Nehemiah said and did nothing. He could have provided counsel to the king to allow the Jews to rebuild the city walls. Instead, he said nothing. He turned the other way and said nothing because he didn't think his voice mattered. I believe that now when his brother told him this news, he wept because he realized his indifference and his apathy were impacting God's kingdom and people in a negative way. He wept because he felt guilty and acknowledged that he was partly responsible. He wept because a spirit of indifference had so swallowed him up, he couldn't even see it until his brother came along and said that things were bad. Followers of Jesus, it is time to awake from apathy and rebuild our lives. It is time to rebuild families that seek after God. It is time to rebuild marriages to seek after God. It is time to rebuild our families and rebuild our faith. It's time to awaken from indifference and engage the world in need of Jesus. So here is a pastoral challenge. We are challenging you to set aside a half day this Friday for fasting, prayer, mourning, and confession and seek God as we lean into whatever is next. I'm going to provide a downloadable resource to help you spend extended amount of time in prayer. It will be available on our Facebook page. Why are we doing this? Because we have no idea what the church and the world and our communities are going to look like in the post-COVID world. But we know that God is always seeking to restore, seeking to gather, and seeking to rebuild. And in order for us to join Him, we must be leaning into God, pressing in and listening to His direction for our lives in faith. You and I, we've spent enough time in apathy. There are times when I simply stop caring. There are times when I'm simply indifferent about the work that we want God to do. But it's time today for God's people to rise up and to rebuild. To rebuild our lives, to rebuild our faith, to rebuild our community, to rebuild our church. So the challenge this Friday from 6 a.m., to noon, set aside time for prayer, for reflection, and to lean in to whatever it is that God has for our next. And we will do that together as a church family, even while we're distant from one another, we'll be leaning in and spending that time in prayer. Thanks for joining us today. If it blessed you today, would you like and share? And if you are planning on joining us this Friday, let us know in the comment section. God bless.